welcome here to R Factor 2 and the Nürburgring where we are underway for our one hour let me check yes a one hour race around the Nordschleife and it's uh, it's gonna be a good one this it usually is around here let's just get through this rather awkward first corner here we're in the M2 oh uh, the CS racing thing whatever it's called it's got many names and it's very confusing we're in the big boy one with 460 oh, horsepowers I believe we started P10 or P11 uh, for this race which I'm doing to celebrate track action starting all things going well tomorrow Thursday just afternoon half past noon local time we will be underway for the first qualifying session and it's going to be wrong as it always is it's great but indeed we are here D no idea what position i'm in right now we're going through the michael schumacher s or michael schumacher s as the germans would probably say coming up to a corner i don't know the name of uh, we'll just get on the brakes here a bit early down into third for this one a good clattering on the curbing I'll ride it out on the outside and you've got to be real patient here just to stay off the throttle don't touch the inside curbing like I did and then you'll be okay and now we're on that charge up to the Vidal chicane very fast and for the 24 hour race they actually run the proper configuration and not the crap 90 degree chicane that they run in F1 this is fast it's flowing it's great I'm pushing far too hard and we're breaking down here. We're going to be down into second. I just get through here. Yellow flag, somebody spinned it. Presumably behind us. It would probably have to be, wouldn't it? Yep, we cleared that. It's all right. So we're just going to have to stay chucked in here. We're up into seventh place going by the uh, Lumirang panel on the car behind us. So we've got P6 in front of us. No qualification for this race. I had something else. Uh, device for this but that went wrong for reasons I don't quite understand uh, instead of going to the race uh, I went to a practice session which I hadn't configured and I lost the qualifying results so haha suck a fat one I did a fairly decent qualifying as well at 9.24 it was about two seconds off my fastest lap which is about what I would expect for me in qualifying I'm not a qualifier don't particularly enjoy just driving around for the sake of driving around and want to race you know so now being here is what we want to be doing as we go through fluke plots here lovely stuff good run out of Guidbachohua down here approaching Schwedenkreuz which is sort of an embodiment of the whole circuit oh they're breaking they're actually breaking I'm, I don't break there but yeah, that sort of embodies the whole circuit because Schwedenkreuz is a, pretty much just a larger section. Uh, and yeah, it doesn't quite work like that anywhere else. But here we are down through Arenberg. Well, I'm back. If you speak the German, down into the Foxo, which is a fantastic place. Love this part. You'll hear that a lot. Break, because the AI does break here. Incorrectly, it does. Up into this a cracking corner this when you can take it flat out not like that but when you can get through there as fast as you can that is great up into Adenauer Forst just run around clipping the curbing a bit much there curbs are pretty significant here I'll ask any Mercedes AMG GT3 driver about that and they'll tell you that it can snap your suspension or your steering and you don't want that down here into Metzger's Fell. Oh, good run up here into sixth. Down into third for the turning down here. And then it's either Kallenhardt or Via Siphon first. No real idea which one comes first. Another the first one here is the third gear corner. Sort of square the car off on the exit curbing. I took a bit too much of it there. You want to ride it down here. Use the camber to get the car through this section down here. And you just got to feather it on the brakes and the throttle through here. And then on the power, on the power. Good run out of here. Down into Via Siphon or Callan Hart. Oh, that's not good. Second gear for this final section. Get it out here nice and good. Be mindful of the throttle. Don't clip the curbing like I did. Just be mindful as you get over that. The back end does want to step out a little bit on you. Down into 
Uh, Brightchite. I always get Brightchite and Brunchen confused. Now I've been to X Muller. The old mill. As we charge out here, out to sector one. Good run right here on Ralph Sylvester. But oh, he's blocking him up the inside. This isn't going to end well. Curbing. No contact into Bergberg. Oh. oh, I don't want to run into the back of him. It's a 60 minute race after all. Don't want to damage my car and don't want to have him spun off in front of me. Forcing a drop, but a good run out of back back here. Can we do something? Can we do something? We're looking up the inside. There's an overlap now. There is an overlap. Yes, we've got the move done as we go through Loudest Corner where he had his accident over to rest us off. Decent region, I think we sort of pushed it a bit hard there. Up here through Closter Tau. Kesselshen. No, it's Kesselshen first, then Closter Tau. So, oh, I'm pushing too hard. Oh, I'm in the fins. I'm in the fins like a dumb bone. Mark Scaife would be proud. I reckon the car's all right, though. So we'll just march here into third as we turn past the Stone Strecke. Up into the Caricciola Carousel. Named after the Rudolf Caricciola. I can't quite pronounce that. It's not quite the German name, but very tricky. Oh, somebody's dropped out of the carousel. Oh, terrible. Terrible for them. You're going to lose so much time if you fly off the end there. Oh, but we've got a good run here on Kartik. No, we can't do that. That's pretty much flat out for me. Had to back out of it. Very far section up through Hua Acht into Hedby in a moment down here. Ah, oh, good run there. Stifled by the cars in front. Not really much of an overtaking point. You've got to be white on it in order to make an overtake work. Just lift off the bottle a bit here. They're slower than me through this section. we just got to mind it out here. Ah, oh, it's a good run right here, but nah, just wasn't able to convert that into a charge out of Vipperman. Ah, oh, back end getting lively right there. Into, is this Esbach? I think this might be Esbach. I'm not sure. It's either that or the ice core that don't know. Oh, he had a bit of the curving right there. Too much speed through there, pushed me out wide. Down into third for this one. Don't want to clip that one. Might roll the car through Brunchen. Through the BMW. Corner of death. As seen on YouTube. Ah, right, but here we go. Good run, good run, good run. Ah, oh, but he slams the door on me and we make contact. That was on him. He moved right on top of me. But here we go. Down through Flansgarten. Break. Airborne. Get it turned in. Carry a lot of speed through. Good stuff. And then I'll just have to lift off a bit here. But can we get a good overlap here? No, we can't. We're going to have to... Our oh, contact just as we go over that hill. That's not what we want to see. <laughs> it's such a good track. Oh, I love this. Oh, breaking down here into Schwalbenschwanz. Ah, oh, I took the curbing there. I shouldn't be doing that. Down here. Ah, oh, curb again. Oh, we've got to get a wiggle on now. Now, here's the crucial part. Part as we now get out here off Schwalbenschwanz as we approach Gallienkopf, which we definitely want to be careful about here. You have to be very careful. This leads out onto the Dottinger Hur, and we don't want to end up making a massive mistake here. But this is a good run. Look at this. Cracking run right out to the line on the exit down the Dottinger Hur. That massive three kilometers straight. Up into sixth gear. Getting a wiggle on here now. Charging down, using the aero. Just sacking ourselves up behind Kartik. He's making a move over there. We're going to pop out to his left. Hello, sayonara, Saka. Suck on that aero draft, bitch. As we go on, Antonio Spuscher on the run down to Tiergarten. Oh, there's a car off there. That's terrible. Into Tiergarten we go. Breaking down fifth gear. Oh, drama. Somebody's off. He's off hard. In the fins. Into Antonio's no, um, Hunring, Hunring Chicano right there. Oh, I'm getting all sorts of messed up right there after that incident. Drama at the end of the first lap. It's Brits Rodeau in front. I don't want him to be in front because he's difficult to pronounce. But Kartik's looking up our inside. He got a better run out of uh, Hunring Chicano. He's got to make a move down here. So we come down into breaking. Ah, oh, he's got the inside. He's got the inside. We'll just let him go through there. 
No real dramas at all, but he's absolutely parking it on the apex. That's quite frankly, this is right. He does have that position. He can sort of hold it on the apex and let me make the move into another corner that I don't quite understand. Yellow flag, yellow flag. Somebody's binned it probably behind us. Sometimes there's a yellow flag in this one, and I don't know why. Again, completely parking it on the apex, which is interesting to say the least, but we are in fifth place, I would believe, with that incident being dealt with. As we go down into Mühlenbach Kurve. And we're on a good exit right there, squaring it up on the exit, getting a good launch out of it. It's sort of based on the carousel. Um, that's bad. I was out wide there, wasn't even near the apex. So riding that curve good. You can ride that middle curve right there very well indeed. Coming up here into this one, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, we want to get right in there. See, good run through there. Using the inside curbing, you can ride the outside curbing as well. But yeah, we are now right on his backside here. And we're just going to have to hope that something presents itself at some point. We need to definitely get up to the two cars in front. Possibly clear them as well as we hunt down what I would imagine to be the leader. I just much better in a race situation the sort of qualifying thing i just can't do it for some reason don't know why in a race yeah everything's there and it's great all right, right here we go we're gonna make a move into the hats and back oh even though i missed the apex but i hung him out to dry he's racing me hard so i'm gonna race him very hard indeed down here this is such a tricky one good stuff good stuff just touching the curbing it's quite all right so we're bouncing down here into oh hard hit on the curbing there that's going to cost me push me out wide on the exit that into third right the curbing here through this would be hook action wouldn't it maybe it's down here i'm not 100 percent sure this is a corner i'm sort of always doubtful about ah oh, too much curbing right there on the power early either you don't touch the curbing there at all or you really ride that curb hard but here we are on the run up to kudelbacher here we're going to have to just shut the door here on Kartik. Come up over the crest. It's rather tricky in these cars. I don't know exactly how fast it can go. We don't have a lot of aero on these. So they don't like it. But that was a good run out of Fluke Platt. Back down here towards Quiddlebacher here. No, we've just been there. We're going towards Schwedenkoit. See, flat out. Break down into fifth turn in. And then you can just get on the power. Look at how it rides the inside braking. Oh, I couldn't chuck it in there on the inside. Had I been just a bit closer on the entrance, I could. But I wasn't, so I couldn't. Now, here we go, down into the foxhole. We've got a disperse of P-Gone. Well, you're going to not be P-Gone. You're going to be gone. See what I did there? Oh, they're breaking. Oh, back and getting globally there. Breaking when I wasn't supposed to be breaking. or when I wasn't expecting it. That's all right, break. Come on, mate. Let's get a wiggle on, shall we? I mean, the lead is just disappearing away from us. Oh, just the curbing, that's bad. But he's on the exit curbing. Maybe we've got a good move here. Oh, it's going to be tricky, though. We've got Kartik. He hasn't dropped off one bit. As so now into Metzikis fell for the second time. Down into four. Back onto the power. Oh, touch the curbing on the inside. I shouldn't have. As I do this more and more in R Factor 2, I've become a lot better at not using the curbing. Forgive me, I am but a European touring car driver at heart. I see a curb, I'm going to ride it, damn it. It's what it's there for, but not on the Nordschleifer. Doesn't like it one bit there, very hard. I'll ride it down here, all over the back of him. Dancing on his back bumper, we are. Looking, looking, looking. He's on a break, here we go. Oh, Jesus, that was a big moment. Don't think we make contact, but I got all sorts of crossed up. And they're curving into their siphon, I think it is. Oh, here we go. Kartik's all over the back of us. We need to make a move here. Get past this guy. The move's going to have to have an out of back back, I reckon. Unless we've got a good run going here, but the problem with the circuit means naturally it's not really that good. Because oh, I had to lift up massively and he blocks. 
Yeah, we're going to have to now dispense of him by getting a good run out of Bergwer, which I did. Look at this. Here we go. To the right-hand side. Be gone. Be gone. There we go. And now he's going to have to deal with Kartik, who also got a much better run out of Bergwer. And now we're hunting down Betro. Oh, pushed hard there. Way too hard. Had to put too much steering in. Dropped us some momentum, but I reckon we're good. As we approach the mud cover. Very tricky one, this. I know the GT3s can do it much faster than this, because they've got lots of aero, but I cannot. Oh, bad one. Bad, bad, bad. Break. I think this is the third year corner. I think like the lower rail step stabilized it a bit. You want to get it just out there and just touch the exit curb and right there. You can see the curbing is a bit darker from where wheels have touched it before. And then into this, which is very tricky to get right. I didn't get it right there. I have no idea how to actually get it right, but I'm assuming you can. But now we're in hunt mode. We have to hunt down whoever's in front. It's Petroido and whoever's in the lead. Fourth gear here as we enter Huart. Very difficult right here. Highest point of the track. Oh, pushing too hard here. That's not great. As we go over, hit me true. Car gets a bit light. You want to watch out for that. This is pretty much flat out. Right the inside. You want to break it here. Scrape up a bit of speed. Didn't scrape up enough speed. Then ride that curving. That's too much. And we are off here into the grass through Vipper Man. You don't want to be doing that again. So I won't. Well, I'll try not do that. Third gear here. Let's try and be a bit more conservative. We need to just get this over with and then get our heads down. Just in business mode. Can't touch the inside curving there. Really doesn't like that. We just have to try and push on here. Out of Brunchen over the curving. He's not pulling her away from us, Petroido, so that's good. Right, oh, Jesus. Such a tricky corner, because you get airborne, just as you really want to be going onto the brakes. Oh, we slowed there. Steering wheel actually started moving off my table, which is not right. Just a dab of the brakes. These cars just don't have the aero to go flat out with a big engine in. You can in the 350 horsepower version. We just have to break down here into Schwabenschwanz. A very, very fast section with no room for error. So you've got to be quite careful here. Ah, oh, mistake there. Touching the inside curbing. But we are closing the gap up to Betroido. He's certainly not two point whatever seconds to the good. That was a fairly decent exit as well. Out of the mini carousel. Approaching Gallienkopf, which I think got its name. Because this is where they used to do public executions back in the day. Uh, a group name. Certainly, oh, bad exit, bad, bad, bad exit right there. But now it's the Dutting Hoer. I think we may just have a bit of an aero tow from Betro. We go down the Dutting Hoer. We can see Schloss Nuburg at the top right over there. Sixth gear. Let's grab a drink. That's good. Keeps us refreshed as we go past the start of the tourist lab. Under Antonio Special with the bins going advertising on here. Now we actually get a good run down here through Tier Garden. Just break. Fifth gear, break down into here, break down fourth. Third gear, that was a bit early. You want to get very close to that um, uh, barrier right there, as close as you can, really. Ah, oh, slid it on the exit. A bit too hard on it, but again, we've closed the gap at the start of the dotting of Hua. That exit out of Hua and Ryan will have cost us. Yeah, look at that. The gap grew. Now let's get a good lap in here. Ah, just too much speed into the first S. And a bad exit out of that right there. We're just going to have to get a wiggle on now. Focus on the things you know we can do. Break. Yep. And down here. Break. Are oh, we being pushed a bit wide? It seems. Yeah. Too much speed through there. That will really punish you if you take too much speed in. So you're going to have to be careful about that. 
And the car doesn't feel that nice, I have to say, around the Grand Prix Strecker. I've, I've raised the ride height a bit, which really helps with compliance out on the Nordschleife. Uh, but around here, the relatively flat Grand Prix track, it is not a happy camper here. Definitely far too softly sprung with that extra travel in the suspension. But it's a trade-off you really want to be making. Now that's good. See, right there we were tucked right up to the apex. And we were able to get on the throttle at the right point. We're at the back end stepping out in us, so that's good. Now we just got the Vidal to negotiate. Which again, with that gear rope means we need to take off a lot of speed. Go through this, which I don't actually think has a name. It's sort of the cut through onto the Nordschleife itself, past the um, temporary pit, which they used. Was it in '84 when they built the modern Grand Prix Strecker? I think it is, or was. But that's still there. That's where they keep a lot of the uh, intervention, barrier repair, and, uh, recovery vehicles, and such. Up here through the Hudson Park, a fantastic part of this track. Very fast, very flowing. And a couple of places like that where you can really ride the curving. I've rode it a bit much there though. But we are right on Frenchy here. Good exit right there. You've got to be careful here. There's a camber change just on the exit that wants to flip you out there. But we made it through very well indeed. As we climb up over here, we're going to have to make a run break just as the car gets light we've been pushed a bit of wide here what we're gonna have to do is get in keep a bit of distance now and then as we come out of Schwedenkreuz into Armbach we can make a move just launch it down the inside so you just lift here down into fifth break turn it in oh, pushing too hard here that moves not on here oh, even though he's a bit squirrely too Oh, but here we are, right on him. Down the foxhole we go. Wasn't this where the Valken horse BMW had a massive crash in qualifying one year? He couldn't actually take the start, I believe. I think so. Was that up into the 19 race? Come on, mate. Let's get a wiggle on. We've got to catch the leader. We might be able to get this guy down into Via Seif, and I think that might be the best place, because that is, if I'm in the right position there and I get that right, that is a very good passing place for me. I'm able to just really get it in there. I mean, I did make a bit of a mess of it on that opening lap, but it goes better than that most times. Right, Ted, you just be careful about going on the throttle too early or the back end will step out on you. Here, you've got to just lift off, I think, and use the camber to your advantage right there. And again, patience here, patience, patience on the throttle. Here we go, good run out! Good run out here, break! Ah, oh, he's closing the door. He's closing the door. Ah, oh, I can't do that. Ah, oh, damn it. I just wasn't close enough and see right there, back end, stepping out on you. It's great. Dear God, this is the best racetrack in the world. You just don't make them like this anymore. Oh, here we go. No. No. Back, back. Into back, back. No. No, that's not going to happen now. We're too far back. Damn it, damn it, damn it. We need to get rid of this guy fairly quickly so we can get a wiggle on. Hold it, hold it, hold it, turn it in right there on the power, good, 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 good. I've turned off the traction control, it's dry, I don't need it, I'm not the driver. Have you seen that video, by the way, of that said I beat a white-headed beat, a, the owner of which was obviously like, babe, listen, I'm a good driver, I, I don't need a bloody ABS around the Nautch Life, it'll just slow me down, I can't do a good lap time. And then up at uh, Veersife and he just locks his front wheels and just absolutely slams into the curb. 
going to the uh, the fence. Just absolute stupidity from his side. No sympathy whatsoever, because that's just his own bone-mindedness. We've got to get a move out of the way here soon. Again, patience, patience, patience through here on the throttle. Just on the throttle too early there will just upset the car greatly. This is definitely a third gear corner speed of itself. It's, oh, this is good. This is good. That was a good exit right there all the way through. Felt stable all the way through the carousel. Up here, just left. Turning. Oh, he's wide. He's off wide. I don't need to be touching that. Third gear around here. We are starting to burn off a bit of fuel, mind. So, and how to get on him. Stay right on him, see where we can force him there. We don't need to be braking there. That's pretty much flat out. A break here. Screw up off a bit of speed. Out wide. And then touch the curbing. And here we go. Oh, too close to the end of the straight, straightation part right there. At the end of the Vipper Man. I think Vipper Man leads into Espa. I think that's how it is. This is the one where you really want to be careful about going onto the throttle too early, especially if you touch that inside curbing, which you don't want to be doing. Our oh, good exit right there. Oh, rode that curbing a bit much, didn't I? I did, but we are on him now. We are on him now. We're going to send some Morse codes through him. Come on, get a wiggle on, mate. Can't really chuck it up the inside here. Ah, oh, no, that's no good. Tell you what, though, we're going to get him down the dosing of here. If nothing else, we're just going to stay tucked right up against his rear bumper. And then we're going to grab him, just brake a bit earlier than him, so the car's stable through the braking action. Very good. Getting blinded massively by the sun now here down through Schwab and Schwanz. Oh, we got a terrible run through there. He clipped the inside curbing. We have a run here, but I don't think we can make the move. We're just going to have to stay here behind him. Here we go. Here we go. On the throttle much earlier than him. Let's just suck ourselves in. I think we can see the leader up ahead. Here we go. You're going to commit. I'm going to go to the outside. We've got the leader right ahead of us. Well, right ahead it's quite some distance it's four well he's eight seconds to the good we're gonna need to pull out quite a special lap now to get him let's just have a check in here and see we are about halfway through this race so that is right yeah so we're gonna do six laps seven laps we're gonna be right on the fuel limit right here into tier gone break down into third fourth Third, avoid touching that curbing even though I really want to. And then be really mindful, don't touch the curbing like I did there. And then on the power. Right, we're going to get an update here and see where we are. We are seven seconds off. Okay. Ah, oh, that's shit. Ah, uh, yeah, that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Let's put the headlights on, just so we're not caught out by a requirement at some point. I think it's just a phantom yellow flag here. Let's try now and see if we can't hunt down Thorvel. He's in the lead. He's down in the Mullenbach, as we can see. Felt like a good exit through there. Bit rubbish in the middle, but the exit was quite good. Had a decent amount of progressive power on it. That felt good as well. Just a gentle lift off the throttle. Not fully off, I felt, so that's good. This one's tricky though. 
Second gear, right the intake curbing, good, helps to rotate the car a bit, square it up on the exit curbing there, can keep the power on a bit. There we go, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, halfway through, run the car off the track just to psych out the opponents. They don't know what to expect. I'm a wild card, bitches. Right. I feel like you could possibly do this in fourth, but that's just a bit too cheeky at the moment. Ah, uh, push a bit too hard through there. Wasn't tucked right up to the apex, and there's a lot of camber in the road through there if you get the line wrong. So let's get through the huts and back nice and good. We are putting some distance behind French, you make French face behind us. Oh, uh, why did we go up into six? We didn't need to be doing that. Ooh. Let's be careful about how hard we're pushing actually. Let's get our focus brain on. Good lines through there. Massive amounts of glare. I can't even get tall in my seat to get the visor to cover it up. As we go over. Quidlbahu breaking down fours. Riding it right out there. Tricky, tricky double apex. So you never really feel like you get it right. But look at the gorgeous sights up ahead right now. And the run down to Schmiedenkreutz. NATO, I do believe, in tribute of a cross erected in memory of some Swedish mercenaries that helped out, I want to say, during the Hundred Year War. But certainly they provided help in this area and they put up a memorial for them there. No idea why it's called the Foxo, presumably where the Manta got its foxtail from, but I could be wrong, probably am. Maybe they found a fox down here when they built the circuit. But that's bad. That's really bad. That could have ended horribly for me. Didn't third. Up here, break by the uh, painted pedestrian crossing. Riding that curbing on the inside like I'm an idiot. Am I mistaken or is he getting closer to me? Maybe it's just a full shortening as we're going a bit slow through at an hour force. But I feel like the gap is being closed down. I am certainly a lot better as a chasing driver. It's a mindset I think I work a lot better in than somebody who is out into the lead. Much rather have something to aim at, something to go for. It just keeps me focused and on the edge. And bizarrely not as prone to making mistakes as when I'm out leading. It's sort of the Ayrton Senna-esque thing. Oh, that's bad. Jesus, that's terrible. Carry too much speed in there, and then it's got all sorts of weird. But we made it through nonetheless. It's alright. Third gear down here across the bridge at Adenau. Very confusingly, not called Adenau, but called Bright Shite. Out here across. This is not a good one, this. This is not going to be my fastest lap by any stretch of the imagination. Into back, back we go. Stay tucked out here. You've got to sort of be prepared to take a late apex. Also keep in mind that the road sort of cambers away as you exit the corner. So the back end really doesn't want to turn. Oh, it doesn't want to go straight when you exit that one. But here we are on the run up through... Kesselschen, I think Kesselschen then Kloster Town. I don't know which one it is. And we'll run through here. Oh, clipping that, curbing that's terrible. Decent run through there. Can't see the speed I did, but looked to be okay. Down to fourth. Past the star struck over there on our left hand side. Steep, I believe, the same kind of surface that's up here in the carousel. 
on the start of Strecker. Go down. Oh, too much speed into that. Oh, he's closing. We're closing in on the leader here. At least I think it's the leader. We're going to have to see. Ah, oh, that was a bit too conservative through there. Too much speed through into a head to be sure. Wasn't good that. That was bad. What am I breaking if I don't need to break? It can be a bit confusing here as uh, Vipperman and Brunchen does look very similar when you approach it. Although this connecting segment is very different. First of all, you can't really use the curbing there, although you can see quite clearly the curbing is sort of darker there where people do clip it, but it's not the kind of... Oh, we're pushing too wide here. Whoa, big moment. Nearly ended up on YouTube there. That's another BMW who went into the fence there. Worst one, I reckon, being the ring taxi. <laughs> and he hit hard. Really hard. Hopefully the paying customers got their money returned from that one. Because that was a, a pretty bad one. I think we just need to touch the brakes into here. Schwalbenschwanz, Flanzgarten, very good through the Bell of Fairs. We want to scrape off speed into... Oh, Christ, look at that sun. That was a terrible middle sector here. We're not going to be anywhere near our best, are we? This would be lucky if we were under a 9.30, I reckon. With all the mistakes. Just got to be careful again. So bumpy, this place. It's just really upsetting the car a lot. So you've got to have that extra ride height to help you out. But the dotting here, let's get some drink in us. see here time remaining 22 minutes so possibly a six lap up which would make sense six or seven laps seven lap is our fuel limit so we're gonna have to wait and see here what we can do just to try and be a bit conservative here This time we've been careful, didn't touch that curb and kept the car decently through there. That was a nine oh, okay. So with all of that, it was a 9.26. That's all right, isn't it? Brake. Do you want to brake? ABS clattering away. That's all right. Get it turned in. Oh, that was tricky. That's pushing too close right there. Ah, oh, then we lit up the rears on the exit. Not ideal. Clipping the intercept curbing there, not great. They are sort of, for some reason, staying a lot closer to the uh, intercept curbing there at the entrance of the second part of that. I'm not sure that's great. I'm not doing that anyway. Back end can get a bit squirrely on the exit there. You might be able to square it off on the exit curb, but it does feel a bit cheeky, really. So I reckon we are very much approaching sunset. See, right there, that's a really good exit through there. I actually managed to get it up into fourth for a split second. We're definitely closing in on four bell. It's down to two seconds at the line. But he's quick indeed. So we've got Seller setting the fastest time. Which is, I reckon, just a couple of tenths quicker than my personal best around this venue. 
this epic, epic venue. Good exit right there of the, um, the cut through into hats and back. Such a good part of the circuit, but quite frankly, everything is about this place absolutely stellar. You can see why people come from all over the world to take part in this race and drive here. It's just fantastic. It's right up there, in my opinion, with Le Mans. Especially as Le Mans is becoming more and more of a just sort of generic, hard to say really about Le Mans, but sort of becoming more smooth. And it's just losing some of that special edge that it has. It's very fast Le Mans, but with all the runoff now, with how smooth that tarmac is, you just sort of losing that sort of sort of thing you know and this just has buckets of it first of all you can't have any more runoff than you do and just for the race itself the 24 hour race the fact that there's no safety cars that's just fantastic because you get to see strategies unfold it's great love it ah pushing a bit too hard through that That's a good exit. But look at that. <laughs> look there. Gorgeous, isn't it? Fucking hell. You can go through there flat out, mate. You don't need to be so concerned. Ho oh, ho, we're gonna need to chuck it around the outside into an hour forced. That is what you can call categorically cheeky though. Yeah, the race starts Saturday. 225 cars listed on the entry list, which is a decent recovery from last year's all-time low, I believe, of just 96 starters. Still some distance away from a healthy grid of around 160, which quite frankly I would like to see again. And ideally the maximum of, is it 220 cars? That's the maximum. I would like to see that. I would very much like to see that again. Because there's something special about seeing the big SP9 cars having to dart their way through traffic. Oh, look at this right up on the backside here. We can chuck it up the inside. Oh, but see, he's pushing us wide. But we've got the inside line now. And we just slide the back end there. See, forced him out a bit into the dirt. So he had to back off, and we're through. Such a good track! Such a good track! Because there's no room for error. None of it. You've got a couple of metres of grass, and that's it. Any mistake that you make in the 24 hour race is just absolutely check out at the first till. Cash or card, please. It's so special to watch, especially if it rains. Oh my goodness me. I believe in the 18 race overnight when the proper rain hit, I think there was some onboard footage of one of the uh, Merck AMG SP9 cars actually lifting down Dottinger Hoer. That's insane. It was just. I mean, I've not seen anything like that before. It was. Superb to watch. Everyone try and dance their way through those conditions. Oh, that wasn't good. That's not good. Into the carousel. And this year, of course, it's going to be just as stark on the Nautch Life at night as we didn't really get to see last year. Because what well, there will be allowing, I believe, 10,000 spectators only on the Grand Prix Strecker. So the Nordschleifen will have no spectators. There'll be pretty much no ambient lighting out here. That's going to be very interesting to see. As hopefully this year we will get some good nighttime running. 
Although, of course, a lot less night time is scheduled, given that the race is happening pretty close to um, uh, the, the longest day of the year, whatever that's called. Solstice, is that the one? Maybe it is, don't know. That's. Whoa! 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 But yeah, that's traditionally why Le Mans is the second weekend of June. That is closest to summer solstice. Oh, making mistakes now. Can't really afford to give anything here. Forvel is just right behind us a bit. Yeah, see, he's just right there. We just have to stay on it now. I think for the rest of the race, I'm just going to have to push as hard as I can. Ah, oh, just went on the throttle a bit early there. Push that wide. Damn. Just get it through, lovely stuff. Ah, oh, too much curving. Coming through. Oh, it's starting to get pretty tricky now that the sun is setting. You're kind of just starting to lose some of your reference points of where you are. Oh, too much speed through the Kleiner Carousel right there. Terrible exit. Dropped on time. Great. Oh, that doesn't feel good. We're too far out here. But look at this. This is good. Turned in at the right time right there. Could pretty much stay flat out once I realised the position I was in. And look at that haze hanging down. The dotting of her. Spectacular stuff. This was the scene of a pretty horrifying accident in the 19 race. There was a code 120, code 60 out here. Guy completely missed that and ploughed into the back of uh, one of the cars that had slowed down. I remember there was a shot from up here up the top and it was horrifying to look at because they caught it, you just saw a car go spearing off as we go to Tiergarten here. This is pretty full commitment. You sort of just split the throttle there for a split second. Get it up over that curbing. That might help us out over that. Get to squirrely. Ignore the arrows telling us to go to the left, right. Yeah, that was worse. No surprise there, really. Let's see here now. Oh, wow, look at that sun. That is really tricky. You can kind of see why you might get mistakes around this time. Every time you go through a sector, it's just a bit different than the last time. Sunlight would have shifted a bit right there. All of a sudden, you've got a glaring sun in your eyes. You need somebody who is capable of dealing with that. So ideally, you'd want, now is the time when the sun's setting, you want your best driver to be in the car. And then once the sun sets, if you have got an amateur driver with you, or somebody who's certainly not that comfortable driving at night, get him in right away, get his night stint over and done with. I then can put in the skilled people again. Quite frankly, that's what you want, given the uh, driver rules at the Nordschleifer. Certainly for the 24 hour race. I have to say, I haven't actually done any laps around it when it's actually dark. So this, oh, look at the sun being so tricky around here. So this is going to be interesting here for the final part of this race. I said, it's a bit of an unknown for me now. I think we've bridged a decent gap back to Favelle. But they could always come back if I make a mistake. And again, as I said, we are now leaving part of the track. We have got a margin for error. Entering into the Nort Schleifer. Slow it down nice and good. Get it turned in. Good stuff. Don't want to put it into the fence on the outside. Focus to see the Ravenel Ferris wheel. Ah, the cameramen always seem to fall in love with every year. A 
and strong put in. One or two quick laps here. Oh, that's a bit too aggressive, pushed a bit too hard here. 10 minutes remaining, 10 minutes remaining. Two laps to go, two laps to go then. Guess I'll be around in, well from now, we're gonna be around in about seven minutes time. So we have got two laps remaining in the race now. We know, confirmed, this one plus one more. Uh, what can we get out of this? Can we hold on to the position that we now have a strong position? Oh, that's just going to be tricky now. Jesus, wet look at that. At some point, there is an apex. Here it is. That's the one we wanted to go for. Spectacular stuff. Look at this. This is so good. Oh, slid the back end out of Adenau, forced. As you come up to where traditionally there is an ambulance park right over there with massive reflections on its side, I seem to recall. Oh, that's not good. That's bad. Oh, missed the apex. Now we're getting sloppy. Ah, oh, Jesus, wet. Um, there's a turning point. Got it. Great. Yeah, that's tricky now, that bit. Until the sun is set, that's going to remain fairly difficult a prospect. I feel like we can't too much speed through here. On the power now, good exit out of um, Cannon Heart, I think. And into Via Siphon, avoid. No, didn't avoid that one. Usually you do want to avoid that. They're looking fairly consistent on pressures. Uh, even the temperature sounds pretty. Oh, look at this! Look at all those reflective panels that the headlights are reflecting off of, and then the soft evening light. It is spectacular! Anybody who says R Factor 2 isn't pretty or a good sim, go home, you drunk! It is amazing! The sheer feel of the cars. I really do hope with the ownership of Motorsport Games, which is. I believe actually Sherrod Naveau now, which is which is interesting, isn't it? I would hope oh so dearly that we're gonna have a VLN Nordschleifer game. Because could you imagine a game like this? A sort of more appropriate weather system and everything just adapted for the Nordschleifer. The cars manta mandatory really. That's good right here, let's see what we can get. We're just starting to back off a little bit now, I think. Don't want to be too cheeky out here now. Oh, pushing in hard. Pushing hard through here. Into carousel. Penultimate attempt. Are oh, we in high? We caught it though. Exiting nicely. You can just see the marshal standing over there. You have to be careful not to get distracted by their shiny bits. So, yeah, just being a bit careful here. That's where the Manfield Mercedes came to rest in 19, I think, with some steering damage. Just touch the inside curbing through Hua. Uh, that really upset that car. It had some contact, I believe, previously in the race, which uh, manifested itself by snapping the steering at that point. Disaster early morning as well, I remember that moment. It was in the lead at the time. Absolutely horrible to watch that car, and that was just done. They're very fragile in there front steering and suspension those AMJs oh, 
really think they're lovely because you know national aspirated v8 at the front what more do you want from your race car these days you can't have really v12s anymore which is a gleaming shame i was fortunate enough to go to uh the more in 07 had the gt1s the aston v12 dbr 9s spectacular the uh, corvette v8 oh oh i just say fantastic machines those i count myself very fortunate indeed to have seen those cars race in person at that great race so oh, that's a decent run through there you can really feel it on the exit if you get it right i would like an ability to actually dim my dash lights because they actually starting to feel a bit too bright right now like there's a lot of little usability things that i would enjoy being fixed or changed at the very least in this like the ability and i've said it before to have proper class positioning on the uh, hub would be nice this is a multi-class sort of racing endurance racing kind of game and it not having that i think is a bit poor really but yeah we got a decent gap back now to favel yeah then better do is even further back let's go for antonio spisher now it's getting a bit cheeky here because it's starting to feel all a bit alien now Frisky on the exit of Hunrein. We made it through. Last lap commencing now. The lap was a yeah, we're not really going to be breaking any. Oh, hello. There. <laughs> there we go. Oh, the ambient lights just came on. Oh, the sun is just over the horizon. I'll be interesting through um, the Kallenhard. Or Via Siphon, Schwedenkreuz as well. We've seen that in Tarenberg. I remember first of all to get through here. Yeah, we say the uh, interior lights are now actually starting getting to the point where they are too bright for me, actually. Especially with the steering wheel on down there, which I usually don't have. So final lap it is, and it is largely a parade lap, providing of course we keep it on the black stuff, with the black things pointed downwards. No chance of hail here, as we saw in the, oh that's too hard isn't it? Uh, no chance of hail as we saw in the 16 race, which halted the race actually. Cars could actually climb out of the foxhole. And we're still on the run up into, I don't know, a forced. Just spinning at their wheels if they try to move any further. So this is the first nighttime lap around the Nordschleife for me. So this could get quite interesting. Just got to stay on it here, try and not get too confused, try and look for things that you know. My family, who has seen some Nordschleife racing with me, always seems amazed that I actually am very familiar with this. I can, can recognise locations if there is incidents fairly quickly on screen. So I'm hoping some of that knowledge will stand me in good stead right here now. And I'm not sure. It's just very different when you're driving. Don't know why that mark is there. That's obviously a marshal post. This is very eerie being literally first car through. No cars in front to help guide you. You've just got the marshal posts and your headlights reflecting 
off of things. So very special. See those marshes? That's so cool. As we run into the Fox Out for the final time. Nobody's in the mirrors, they're far behind, just the track ahead to be concerned about. We're going to try and take it a bit easy through here. Don't want to have any great upsets here on the final lap. Oh, that's too much curbing there. Far too much curbing. But we'll make it work. Sure, that was particularly good through there, but now we had to. Yeah, that did say Callan Hart, so Callan Hart at first, which is a great name, Callan Hart. Still going through Callan Hart here. You've got to get that right, don't go on the throttle too early. Into Veer Siphon made the decisive move and getting an absolute pixie around of that one. I was just confused over there, some lights just popped in I think. Wasn't sure if um, that was a car, but I reckon that was just some lighting making an appearance as we go down here past the town of Adenau. That's why you see, see those tall walls right there, that sound detonate for the city of Adenau or town of Adenau. Mate, I ain't fucking pitting, mate. Jog on, mate. That's definitely not helpful because that can really catch you out if something changes in your peripheral vision. But we'll make it work. As we approach Louder Corner in a second, the fateful corner where he exploded into flames on the exit right here. Boom! Dreadful, dreadful accident. As we climb up here. This is one we want to break for, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We break a bit much there, but I'll take it. I've got the lead to sacrifice it. where the Manta was sitting, was that at Flansgarten a few years ago in the morning I think it was leading SP3 at the time when somebody just clattered into it just very very rudely I know it wasn't in 90, it wasn't in 20 because it wasn't in the race in 2019 that car retired but pretty much retired in the evening they had to there were a significant amount of repairs following a ah, severe crash uh, right out of the first hairpin chicane. Uh, it got out. Standing ovations for a final lap. Everybody in the pits applauded it. All the spectators gave it applause. It so rightfully deserves. In 18, I want to say it retired fairly early. with uh, some engine trouble. Uh, might have been 17 it was punted off, because in 16 I think it never really got past the restart. I seem to remember there was a stoppage after the dreadful hail. And I seem to recall that it never really caught a, a restart there. I've just done that last bit while I was talking without really noticing what I'm doing. That's quite terrifying. I think this was the corner here where the Manta was put off. Which I think should be punishable by disqualification. Thankfully, Glickenhouse has posted a picture already of the car at this year's race 
obviously accepting that their SPX entry isn't as important as a Foxtel Manta, which is entered by the team Olaf Beckman, with one of the drivers being Olaf Beckman, which is a wonderful thing. I, I love that. Just such an endearing thing to do. But it's there. It's mighty. It's magnificent. It is the king, queen, the regent, the emperor, empress, the supreme ruler, the monarch of the Nordschleife. And it is there this year. Uh-oh. Nearly got it all wrong there as I was gushing over the manta. And I'm ready. 100% ready this year for 24 hours of manta vision. Who isn't ready? Who We've got to have a Manta on board camera, guys. Come on. Come on, Vega. You can do it. Give us a Manta on board. You know you want it too. Magnificent machine. Foxtel. Mighty Foxtel. Just thundering around the notch life. Of course, there are the big cars. There are the small cars. But there will never be anything like the Manta. Go through Hunrain Chicano for the final time. Then the back end, get wild. Celebrators will cross the line to take the checkered flag. We win, we win, we win, we win. And I am good. Whoa, that's a pit call. So we very nearly called somebody here. Oh, there's only one. One way to celebrate this yeah we won we won we won we won number one so thank you very much for watching hope you've enjoyed this one hour bad shit race at the launch life but well, it wasn't really that bad shit but it's a lot of fun this place i do hope if you have even the slightest interest in checking out the 24 hour race do because it's it's mad in it absolute madness absolute bloody madness goodbye